So Grace Hoover is also helping us with uh, senior songs. And you can find songs to the junior program on bqmaterials.com. Or you can create your own songs. That's what a lot of people do. They can be very simple. Use a familiar tune, a song that you're already singing in church, and just set the verses to those and have it station two, then learn the verses by song. Station three, you write or type. Did anybody learn that way when they were a quizzer? You had to write it down? I know my wife was very successful doing that. And sometimes you have to write it to learn it. The last one is learning all by yourself. And that's how I quizzed when I was a quizzer. I just sat in my room, me and my verse cards, my flash cards, and that's how I memorized. And so after each station, the quizzer comes back to you and has to quote all four verses. And I have a hunch that you're going to be able to find out very fast which is the best way for them to memorize. And then that's going to give them some valuable tools as they're moving on through their season. What are some other ways that we can quote? A circle quote is one of my favorites. That's idea number 49. A circle quote is where everyone stands in a circle facing inwards, all of your quizzers. You take a ball, you have a quizzer quote one verse and then pass the ball to the next person. You go clockwise around and they have to quote a whole passage. So you take a chapter of maybe 15 verses and they've got to go around and they've got to quote 15 verses in sequence. You're timing them while they're doing it, then you have them try to beat their time. And by the end they're able to go really, really quickly around the circle. Quoting all verses that have a common verse number, that's a great way to do cross-referencing and charting later on in the year. So if you have a quizzer that's really you know, exceeded expectations and they already know all the verses really well, they know their one-time words, their two-time words, they're doing charting at this point. Charting is a word we use to um, describe studying other details in the quiz material, like unique phrases and uh, cross-reference material. So one verse um, might talk about um, strength, and one verse might talk about weakness, and the quiz master at the tournament might say, what verse talks about strength, and what verse talks about weakness? And that might be a direction they go with cross-referencing. But if you have a quizzer that's really, they need something to keep them stimulated, do the number 51, common verse number, where they have to quote every chapter is verse 1. John 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 8, 1, 10, 1. They have to go down and do all the verse 1s. Then when they're done with the verse 1s, they've got to do all the verse 2s. And it's a unique way for them to look at their material in their mind. Bible quizzing dodgeball is a fan favorite here. Oh, that's her sister. Emily Hoover. Emily Hoover. All of our people online, Emily Hoover. Um, Bible Quizzing Dodgeball is a great game. You can read that. I Spy is a, something we've never tried, but I heard an individual mention this. And a quizzer has to play the game I Spy with their verses. So if they see a tree outside, they have to quote something that has a tree. And it's great if you're driving down the road and doing this on the way to nationals. And so they see a sign for, for US 11, and they've got to quote 1-1. One, one. And uh, so that's a, that's a neat creative game. I like that idea. Locating drills, chapter 5. Locating is one of the hardest things for a quizzer. Oftentimes, the first thing a quizzer can do is a quotation completion. Well, the first thing a quizzer can do is answer a one-part a one question or a two-part question. They can give you a piece of a verse. But if a quizzer really knows their material, if you start the verse, they can finish it. But one of the hardest things for a quizzer to do is give you the verse reference. Because that tells me they really know where that verse can be found. So if I say Jordan, like the River Jordan, and the quizzer knows exactly all the verses that have that word. That tells me they really mastered their verses. And so locating is something that you really have to do. And when your quizzers are learning at home, 
Encourage them to say the verse reference before or after they quote every verse. Or else it'll all just be lost in the blur. So every time they go through their verse, have them say, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Have them say that at the beginning or the end, because it'll reinforce in their mind where to find it. You can ask a verse reference many different ways. So you'll see um, number 57 all the way through 62, all different ways you can ask a quizzer to locate a verse. Charades and Pictionary are a really fun way to mix a quiz practice. One thing that I really like is the uh, staircase challenge. Or if you don't have stairs at your church, you can do the pew challenge, pew race challenge. And what you do there is you're having quizzers locate verses. Every time they get one right, they get to move up one step. Every time they get one wrong, they move down one step. And the first one to get to the top of the staircase wins. And so it's a way to get up, moving around. You've got to, you can't do any one thing for more than 15 minutes with a junior quiz team. Forget about it. It's not happening. So you've got to have things where you can say, we're getting up, we're moving around, we're going to the next door, we're doing a little field trip, and mix things up that way. Um, there are online games with ubcquiz.com that you can take advantage of. Chapter 6. The hardest thing as a coach is to really teach your quizzers to interrupt well. In Ohio, this is more of an issue because Ohio has a very rich quizzing ministry. There are churches in Ohio that have had quiz teams for more than two decades. And so as soon as you go to a tournament in our district, you know that the majority of teams are interrupting their questions. And that means you're buzzing in before the quiz master is done reading the question. And when you do that, you have to finish what the quiz master would have said and answer. And the more you know about how questions are written, the better you are at doing that. One of our videos online are how to interrupt a question. And so, the first way to do this, the first way to learn how to interrupt a question is to know your verses. If a quizzer doesn't know their verses, forget about interrupting. It's not happening. The second way to become better at interrupting is to um, hear more questions. If a quizzer hasn't been to many quiz practices, it's hard for them to know what direction the question is going. It has to be something familiar to you. So when you're sitting there and the quiz master says, question number 15 is a quotation question worth 20 points question, Bethsaida. Do you think that's a reasonable place to interrupt? Yeah. Most quizzers say, yeah, I can finish that. Because what was I going to say? Stephen, what was I going to say? Bethsaida. I was going to say, quote the verse of study that contains this information. But someone who isn't familiar with quizzing doesn't know I was about to say that. And so the more they hear questions, the more experience they get, the better they're going to be able to do this. So I don't expect a first year quizzer to be good at interrupting. That's, that's icing on the cake. If I have a first year quizzer who can do that, they exceeded expectations in my mind. But number one, you have to know your verses. There's no other way around it. You've got to be able to quote. Because if I ask you a two-part question, and I give you the first part, but you don't know the verse, you don't know how to form the second question. So, um, for instance, um, John 1.5. Somebody quote John 1.5. Did we forget it? The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. So, if I asked you, if I asked you, this is a two part question or a ten points question, according to John chapter 1, verse 5, the light did what? What's the second question? The darkness did what? The darkness did what? 
That seems like it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But if you didn't know John 1, 5, then you're not going to know that the darkness did something. You didn't know that was the second part of the verse. All right? So um, when you're in a quiz, you can do a forced interruption where, as the quiz master, you might think it's a little bit mean, but you're reading the quiz, and you just stop reading halfway through. And they don't have a choice. If you want to buzz in, you've got to interrupt it. And so the quizzer buzz in, they have to finish what you would have said and finish the question. So a forced interruption quiz. What you can also do is hand the quiz to the quizzer. All the questions handed to them. Have them take a pencil and have them mark where they feel like an appropriate interruption would be. Where do they feel like they could reasonably interrupt this question? And then talk about it. And see if anybody thinks, yeah, I could have interrupted that sooner. And oftentimes there's, there's a break-even point where after a certain point, it's, it's um, fair to say you could finish that, but before that point, it's, it's really unlikely. It might be a 50-50 chance. And a lot of times it's just a, it's a risk versus reward type thing where you find your break-even point as a quizzer, and some people that means I'm going to get one out of five wrong. But if you get one out of five wrong, you have an 80% correct.